have seen it red for fun. Hi, all. We're going to be visiting all of our libraries today. It's going to be turtle time. <gasps> Speaking of turtle time, have you got a fist? If you put out your thumb, you've got a turtle. This is my turtle. This is his shell. He loves his shell very well. When he is hungry, he sticks out his head. And when he is sleepy, he pulls in his head. Don't worry, he's not dead. Here's our turtle. Let's read a book. Follow the Moon by Sarah Weeks. It was a Thursday night in June, and the voices in their heads said, Follow the moon. Inside my head there was no voice. I didn't hear a single sound. I didn't move. I had no choice. That's when he found me and built the fence around me. Inside my shell, I was alone. I couldn't sleep. I tossed and turned. I don't know how he could have known, but in the morning he returned and told me what he'd learned. He said, it's bound to happen soon. You, you'll hear the voice inside your head saying, follow the moon. He spread his blanket on the sand. He kept the dangers all at bay. He somehow seemed to understand that I needed him to stay. He didn't go away. And then I heard it in my head. At first a squeak and then a croon. The boy was right. It clearly said, follow, follow the moon. On that Friday night in June, the voice inside my head said, follow the moon. The voice just kept repeating and repeating and repeating, and the drums just kept beating and beating. The moon hung from a silver string, the most beautiful thing. I had no choice. I had to listen to the voice. And then a new voice began to speak. It was a most familiar sound. It said, that's not the moon you seek. Turn around, turn around. That's not the moon you found. And then he led me to the sea. He knew exactly what to do because he found the moon for me. I don't know how he knew unless he heard it too. On that Friday night in June when the voice inside my head said, follow the moon. decided to take some food down to the old dock and see who would come to eat it. Everybody really seemed to like the food, but they also seemed really worried. They were looking around like they were scared of something. Uh-oh. I should have known. It's the baby alligator. His name is Deep Sea Madness the Fifth, and he's kind of a bully. Hey guys, I'm Amy from the Waccamawneck Branch Library and I'm here to show you some of our collection of turtle books that we have here at Waccamaw, but we have them all throughout the entire Georgetown County Library system. This is our in-house sea turtle, her name is Coretta, and she is part of our, out, our big backyard project that we have outside. So when we're open, you can come by and see her. But here's just a sample of some of the books and movies. This one is actually narrated by Russell Crowe. 
and it's about Bungie's Big Adventure. But we have all kinds of different books, fictional, non-fictional, all different ages. Any information you want to find out, your library is a great place for that. We thought I would show you how we're taking care of the fish while you guys aren't here. Here's our saltwater tank. I don't know if a lot of you know this, but we actually grow our own seaweed down in the bottom so that we can feed them fresh food. So we keep it down here and we just grab some pieces off. It looks like this. And then we put it in, it's like a little fresh salad for them to eat. You see, they love that. We also give them fish flakes, which they also really enjoy. They really like to eat in general. And you see, they can see me coming. So. Come on, guys. And there's a little clownfish. And there's the one that looks like Dory is over there. This is their favorite time of day when they get to eat. And you can kind of see if you watch closely that the coral moves. They move their arms to try to catch pieces of food sometimes too. See how they're popping up out of that green one? See how the little ones are sticking up a little bit? Pretty cool. This is our freshwater tank. These are some freshwater angelfish. This guy's the, the big guy, he has the bigger head, and that means he's like the, the guy in charge. So tiger fish, and we have a catfish. I don't see him out right now, but we'll see them eat too. And now we're gonna go visit with our friends at the North Inlet, Winyall Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve. Have fun. Thanks for tuning in to our new Snippets by the Salt Marsh brought to you by the North Inlet, Winyall Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve. For this snippet, we will be partnering with the Georgetown County Library System. The Georgetown County Library System will be putting together theme packets that go along with this episode of Snippets by the Salt Marsh. Please stay tuned on when and how to pick up your theme packet. Tis the season for sea turtle nesting here in South Carolina. Today's snippet will talk all about South Carolina's state reptile, the loggerhead sea turtle. Loggerhead sea turtles start nesting on our beaches in May. They crawl up on the beach and dig a hole in the sand using their back flippers. It is shaped like this and is called a cavity. This takes place at night because there are less people and less predators that might try and hurt them. Their eggs are ping pong ball shaped and soft and leathery so they do not break as the mother drops them down into the cavity. She will lay on average 110 eggs per nest. The eggs will stay in the cavity for about 60 days. The temperature determines whether the sea turtles will be boys or girls. The cooler the nest is, the more boys. The warmer the nest is, there will be more girls. The mother will nest several more times during the summer, and during that time she will not be eating because she does not have room in her stomach because of the eggs. This means that sea turtles could lay over 1,000 eggs per nesting season, but only one out of a thousand sea turtles make it to adulthood because of all the dangers that sea turtles have to face. Some of the dangers include animals digging up the eggs, sharks, birds, and most of all, humans. Unfortunately, sea turtles are hit by boats and they accidentally mistake marine debris or trash in the ocean as food. A hatchling is the word used to describe a baby sea turtle. As the hatchlings emerge from the nest, they quickly make their way to the ocean. If you see a hatchling on the beach, should you touch it? No, because they need that exercise and movement because they will be swimming all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to the Sargasso Sea to eat and get bigger. Usually they emerge from the nest at night and follow the reflection on the ocean and the white waves. This is why we need to turn off our lights when walking off the beach at night. Sea turtles have a difficult time seeing red lights. We recommend using red lights at night on the beach. If you counter a sea turtle on the beach, safely watch from a distance. 
Once they have gotten older and bigger, they will start their journey back from the Sargasso Sea. Once they are at least 25 to 35 years of age, they will start laying eggs on our beaches. Loggerhead sea turtles are known for their massive heads and strong jaws. Because of this, they are able to eat animals with hard shells, such as crabs and snails. Although no turtle has teeth, it is best to keep your hands away from a turtle's mouth because they can still bite. Loggerheads are a large sea turtle weighing 200 to 300 pounds fully grown. How can we help these amazing animals? Even if you do not live near the ocean, things you may be doing could still affect them. To keep our planet and oceans clean, carry reusable water bottles and reusable shopping bags. Plastic shopping bags are easily caught in the wind and could land in the ocean. Sea turtles mistake these as jellyfish and eat them. Releasing balloons may seem like a fun thing to do, but eventually they might fall into the ocean and be eaten by a sea turtle. I recommend using bubbles instead. Lastly, smashing sandcastles are just as fun as making them. If you're visiting the beach, make sure you fill in holes and smash sandcastles so sea turtles do not get stuck in them. Thanks for watching the Snippets by the Salt Marsh about loggerhead sea turtles. Make sure you share with your friends and family on how we can protect sea turtles. So, um, good morning. Today we're going to make a potato masher turtle craft. And some of you may know this as a potato masher. Some may know it as I make that my egg salad with that. Um, apparently some of us make Oreo cookie balls with it, but that's, that sounds good too. Okay, so um, it's pretty simple. Um, if you have googly eyes at home, that's great. If you don't, you can always draw a little face on with a marker. Um, you will need some colored paper though. I'm using light blue for the pond and green for the turtle's body. And you will need some paint. Um, washable paint is perfect. And a little bit of glue, some scissors, and something to put your paint in, which is I'm using this paper plate. So get started. Just a little bit of paint. You don't really need a whole lot. And this is the fun part. This is where you get to mash. Make sure it's nice and coated. Press it down. paint yesterday but that's okay. All right then to cut out their little bodies the easiest way to get matching pieces is to fold your paper and you're just going to cut a very simple small U shape for their little feet. slightly bigger U-shape for the head. And that's it for their little body pieces. Then you want to take a little bit of glue. Thank you. 
And then if you have googly eyes, great. If not, you can just draw a little face. Let the glue and the paint dry and then you can hang them up on the fridge. Hi guys, it's Storytime with Carver's Bay Branch Library and today we're reading Turtle Bay. Turtle Bay. Taro and Hiro-san were friends. Hiro-san showed Taro how to feed crabs with pieces of rotten fish. He taught him to dive for sponges. When the sea was too rough for swimming, he trained him to sit very still and watch the seahorses swim around the seaweed in the deeper rock pools. Taro's sister, Yuko, didn't like Hiro-san. He's weird, she said. Last year, my friend saw him sweeping the beach with a broom. No, he's not, said Taro. He's old and wise and full of wonderful secrets. One day, Taro found Hiro-san sitting on a big rock. What are you doing, he asked. I am listening, said Hiro-san. The wind is bringing me a message. Taro sat on the rock and listened, but all he could hear was the seagulls crying. Ah, said Hiro-san at last. Now I understand my old friends are coming. Who are your old friends? asked Taro. You'll see, said Hiro-san. Next day, Hiro-san brought two brooms and handed one to Taro. For sweeping the beach, he said. Taro's heart sank. Yuko was right after all. Hiro-san was weird. There's a lot of rubbish and broken glass on the beach, Hiro-san explained. My friends won't come if there's broken glass. They know they'll get hurt. The boy and the old man swept the beach from one end to the other. They collected all the rubbish and put it in Hiro-san's cart. Soon the beach was cleaner than it had been all summer. Hiro-san looked pleased. Meet me by the big rock tonight, he told Taro. Taro ate his supper as fast as he could. You seem in a big hurry, said his mother. I am, said Taro. Hiro-san's old friends are coming. Who are they, his mother wanted to know. It's a secret, said Taro. What kind of secret, Yuko asked. Taro didn't answer. He washed his hands and went out to find Hiro-san. Look, said the old man, pointing out to sea. Taro saw a school of dolphins riding the waves. Are they your old friends, he asked. No, said Hiro-san. Perhaps they will come tomorrow night. Taro waited patiently all the next day. In the evening, he met Hiro-san again. This time, the old man had brought his boat out of the shed. Hiro-san picked up the oars and they pushed out to sea. After a while, the old man said, we've got company. Taro watched as a huge whale flicked her tail up out of the water. She had a calf swimming beside her. Are they your friends, Taro asked. They're friends, said Hiro-san, but not the old friends I meant. Maybe they will come tomorrow. The next evening, 
Hiro-san was in his boat again. Where are we going, Taro wanted to know. Over there, said Hiro-san. He rowed out to a secret cove on a little island. There, Taro saw three large fish with swords for snouts. Are they your old friends, Taro asked. All fish are my friends, said Hiro-san, but these aren't my old friends. They seem to be late this year. Perhaps they are not coming at all. Don't be sad, Taro said. Perhaps they'll get here tomorrow. Do you want to come and wait for Hiro-san's old friends? Taro asked Yuko after supper the next day. Yuko wasn't doing anything, so she followed Taro to the big rocks, kicking the sand as she walked. Shh, said Hiro-san. I think they're here at last. Yuko and Taro saw a dark shape moving toward the shore. It was huge and bobbed up and down on the water like an enormous cork. At last, the children could see what it was, a turtle. She's coming to lay her eggs on our beach, said Hiro-san proudly. The turtle scrambled ashore and started digging with her flippers. When the hole was deep enough, she laid almost a hundred round, creamy colored eggs in the nest. Then she filled in the hole with then she filled in the hole with her hind flippers, flung more sand over it with her front flippers, and hurried back to the sea. She's going to tell the others, said Hiro-san. What is she going to tell them, asked Yuko. That the beach is safe, said Taro happily. The next day, Yuko came to the beach with her own broom. Can I help sweep the sand, she asked. Of course, said Hiro-san. The more of us there are, the safer the beach will be for the turtles. The three friends swept up all the litter dropped by the beachgoers during the day. Then they sat on the rocks and watched more turtles coming ashore. There were lots of them, all huge and old and wise, just like Hiro-san. Now, said Hiro-san, you must be patient and wait until you hear from me again. Eight weeks later, Hiro-san told the children to meet him at dusk. Sit on the rocks, please, he said, and watch the ground. The children looked and waited for what seemed like hours. As the moon rose, they saw something moving under the sand, something small and fast and eager. It's a baby turtle, cried Taro. The eggs have hatched. Soon the beach was full of baby turtles. There were hundreds of them, all scuttling down to the sea. The children couldn't believe their eyes. Hiro-san is not crazy after all, is he, Taro whispered to Yuko. No, said Yuko, he is old and wise and full of wonderful secrets. The end. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this book, Turtle Bay, and have a great day. And remember, reading is fun to your mental. Keep reading. <laughs>